So the process for the Teamers Lash Blaster starts with designing the piece that we're going to 3D print to attach to the front end of it to give it that really good replica feel. And so I'm at my good friend EOC's house right now and that's what we're doing. We're designing the front end of the Teamers Lash. This is going to be down here the attachment point. I think we're going to use the 4 Victory because that plan worked really well last time. We're going to run it back. Obviously there's some bracketing going on in there but I think that it should be really interesting. And so it begins. Go, make a bot, go, go, go! 26%, so almost a quarter of the way there, and that's as much of this as we've got. Should be very exciting. Okay, so here's the machine, and then this is a bigger version of the machine. You can see here that it's been working for 12 hours and it's 44% done and it thinks that it has 16 hours left. The filament is coming through this tube from a spool in the back and then it's printing here. Just coming in and like you can see here there's a honeycomb design for strength and it's doing that throughout and the outer shell is also very strong. It's just a really cool little gizmo. This dial tells you stuff about it. It's like that's what it's trying to print, what it'll look like when it's done. That's what we called it. It's Teamer Part 1 and 2. This is all the little things about what it's using. It's printing PLA plastic, which is polylactic acid plastic. The temperature that it's printing at, how full it's going to be is 15%, and how many shells the outer thing is is three layers. And then that's the current temperature of the extruder right now. It's just a really neat little little dude, and he's just tireless. All he does is go. Whoa, 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 whoa. At this point, we are about 70%. Looking good so far. So coming in here, I am kind of prototyping out the Teamers Lash. I've already taped off the internals for this for victory so that I could start painting the hammer. I think I'm going to go for a gunmetal silverish kind of trim on the hammer prime as well as some of the mechanics and then optics. I think that that's how it looks in the game. Now, this is very nice since we did a three thickness for the walls. After I attach this, I should be able to sand it a little bit. There should be some room for sanding, which will be very new for me in 3D printed parts, and that's exciting. Moving along, this is kind of how the blaster is going to prototype together. All of this has to be sanded. We have to grind off all of this nonsense here so the blaster will be clean and be a functional replica, not just a kind of look-alike blaster. So that's about where I want to make my cut. I think, and then most importantly of all, we have to line up this 6 o'clock shot with the straight through that you can see there through these parts. Each part has a barrel hole as this is going to be a solely 6 o'clock shooter. My last word had 12 and 6, but I don't think that that's going to be possible given that I can't come in here and take this out. So this is going to have one shot be ramrod loaded, but it should be very, very cool. I'm going to go ahead and start prepping these pieces. I've already started painting some of them with this. This is a black vinyl dye, which is just a really good base coat. In the case of the trigger, it'll be the final coat. And in this case, it's just so that this will never show up pink, I guess. And I think that that covers that. I'll show you kind of what it looks like after I've done a whole bunch of that next. All right, so I have made the cut that I want. It's going to line up kind of like this and then we'll bridge this with putty but just to show you like knocking out some of this PLA it was so meticulous to get it printed just right but getting it out of here is just a monstrous task for those who say that 3d printed parts are fragile this one certainly isn't and so I think we're really close I'd rather not have to bust out the Dremel again. There we go. Like these honeycombs are very tough and then the, the solid pieces like this, this is, this is a rock. Yeah, this is just some pretty crazy stuff. So looks like that's mostly knocked out. I'll probably melt the remainder of this just because breaking it has proved so difficult and I don't want to damage the outside but that's about what we're going to be looking at. I think it'll be pretty close. 
Okay guys, so progressing along Teamer's Lash, I went ahead and took a long shot front gun barrel, gutted it, and strapped it into the 6 o'clock shot on the Forvik itself, and I think that that's going to be really nice. I'm getting consistent shots out of it that are quite powerful. I've gone ahead and used methacrylate epoxy to blend the two pieces of the 3D printed part, and then, of course, I came in and built an epoxy putty ramp to bridge the two. It's not perfect, but it'll look much better with paint, and then there's still some serious sanding and body work to be done here, but there's a solid blending, and that is awesome. You can see that I've taped off everywhere that I've already painted with a black vinyl die, and then you can kind of see my silver detail work there as well as the new trigger, which is sweet. And now all this needs is a full sanding as it's still kind of got that 3D printed feel to it. And I started on the back end, then decided to bond it so that I could blend all the way through. I think that it'll be really exciting when it's done to kind of see how it looks. It's much longer than I anticipated it would be, but all the hand cannons are just ridiculously oversized, kind of practical fantasy weapons so I guess we're just gonna have to wait until we've got this sanded down and coated with another layer of black vinyl dye primer and then we'll get to the detailing but it's it's an interesting project so far I'm pleased with how it's progressing so after getting the putty completely done the integration is pretty solid and sanded down I think that it looks pretty nice I'm going to go ahead and lay a black vinyl dye base coat over this and then I'm gonna come in and add some revolver cylinder pieces that I'm printing up right now and then after those I think it'll be ready to start doing the hand detailing and really bring it to life Alright guys, so this is Teamer's Lash after its last base coat of black vinyl dye. Just pulled off the masking tape that I used to protect the hammer prime, but everything is functioning well and seems to be in good shape. The 3D printing just has a lot of ridges, which isn't the end of the world. Wish we could have done this in one piece, so there are some flaws in this model, but I think that for what we're going for and how we want it to be functional, that we're pretty close, and so I can't wait to get it detailed and show you what it looks like when it's finished. Alright guys, so this is it, the final segment of my Teamers Lash mod guide. You can see that the 3D printing and the integration didn't necessarily agree with one another once I got done wet sanding and brushed all of the stuff off, but I think that overall it captures exactly what it's supposed to do as a functional replica. It not only fires nerf darts, but also actuates with things like the hammer primes and the trigger pulls, which is excellent. It also definitely fits the cosplay rule that it is recognizable from a distance. Like, from a distance, this looks like Teamer's Lash, definitely, and I think that it's super duper cool. I think that the Lords of the Iron Banner would be very, very proud of this iteration. Huge props to the Draculina for freehanding the Iron Banner symbol on both sides. I think that that just looks incredible. Very, very nice work there. And then firing, I mean, performances are going to be rather poor, actually, on account of it is a modified four victory with just a massive amount of dead space. This is almost a full foot of barrel length that's doing nothing but inducing drag, but still getting okay performance, I guess, ranges of about 25 feet. For those who have wondered in the past how I load these replica blasters, the answer is that I ramrod load them. In this case, I need an extra dart just to get the length and then I kind of tap the dart into its AR down there with a screwdriver then the dart that I used as a spacer falls out and then priming and firing again is easy that was a much better shot but that is the full replica on Teamer's Lash I haven't seen anyone make a Teamer's Lash it would have been much nicer of course if I had printed the entire thing and resin cast it but this is designed to be a functional blaster it's certainly one of the more powerful legendary hand cannons I like it much more than word of Crota or the, uh, I don't know, it's tough to say. The one from Vault of Glass is also very sweet, but I don't have it. So this is my Teamer's Lash. It definitely was in need of a nerf. Ha ha! But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. The build was a lot of fun start to finish. I needed this replica for a convention that I'm working at pretty soon called Dragon Con, which is very exciting. And so there it is. That's my replica. I hope you enjoyed the video. A lot of it was a little bit rougher than I would have liked, but we were in a serious time pinch to get it done, and it turned out fair enough for, for our needs and requirements.